Data Hive in Halo 3 ODST is a level I really rather enjoy. It's oftentimes quite dark, fairly moody, and very atmospheric, and because of that, I always have a great time revisiting it. There's also a lot of Halo fans out there who really, really dislike it, which has made me question myself somewhat. And with that being the case, I thought it might be fun to take as objective a look as possible at the level to try and come to a more definitive conclusion. Before we try and figure things out, here's a quick rundown of what happened previously during ODST, just in case you need a refresher. Aboard the ship, the UNSC Say My Name, an ODST squad made up of Buck, Dare, Dutch, Mickey, Romeo, and player character Rookie, prepare to attack a Covenant assault carrier hovering above New Mombasa. However, their mission doesn't begin altogether successfully. Dare changes the trajectory of the team's drop pods, and the Covenant ship enters slipspace and emits an EMP, preventing the pod's parachutes from deploying. After being knocked unconscious, Rookie awakens some six hours later alone on the city streets and begins searching for his friends. While exploring, Rookie finds several clues as to what happened to them. Buck landed and began searching for Dare. He wasn't successful, but he did locate Romeo instead. Dutch joined up with a squad of Marines to battle the Covenant in a nature reserve. Mickey used a scorpion to carve a path through the city's streets, after which he teamed up with Dutch to repel a Covenant attack on an Oni base, before the pair arranged to meet Buck and Romeo nearby. After more heated firefights, the four do eventually manage to meet face to face, with Romeo unfortunately badly wounded in the process, and after hijacking a Covenant dropship, the team decide not to leave the city, but to instead help Dare complete her classified mission, beginning their journey towards New Mombasa's underground tunnels. And that is where Data Hive begins. Upon entering the data center, Rookie immediately picks up a troubling radio transmission from Dare, got me cornered. I'm low on ammo. If you can hear me, I'm on sub-level 9. Use station before you're free to begin exploring the area, an area which, according to some nearby grunts, should have already been closed off by the drones instead of them devoting their attention to their new hive. Why Yen may A not seal this entrance? Too busy building fancy spin hubs. If traitor escape it, their fault, not ours. Data Hive starts out really strong. Something had clearly happened in the centre prior to Rookie arriving, with dead bodies strewn across the first room you explore, and this door opening and closing on the leg of one unfortunate soul. The music playing, the track you can hear now, has an oppressive quality in keeping with the mission's mechanical, claustrophobic layout and aesthetic, and I'd go so far as to say that it almost has a sort of droning quality to it, much like most of the level's soundtrack. That is, of course, especially fitting given both the environmental context, it's one full to the brim with machinery whirring away, but also because Data Hive is, I think, the most drone-heavy level in the entire franchise. Developer Bungie does also throw in some straightforward encounters during these early moments to keep you on your toes, and I'd rather they weren't there. Even with their inclusion, it's still a very lonely and tense beginning to proceedings, but there wouldn't have been any harm in letting things simmer for just a little while longer. I'd have not only kept the first few corridors entirely devoid of Covenant, but I'd have also either done the same to these circular rooms or removed most of them altogether. It would have helped really build tension for events which follow, ensuring their impact was felt all the more acutely. In terms of those events, first you meet this NMPD officer, <laughs> Thanks, Trooper. They almost had me. Been trying to get down to the next level checking my team, but this stack is locked down tight. Welcome. Access granted. Huh. I guess you have the magic touch. Which is followed swiftly by a jump scare of sorts. Buggers! Look out! before you drop down into the next area and enter the darkest room you've encountered so far, where you witness a drone feasting on a human corpse. 
Imagine how much more unsettling this chain of events would have been if there were no encounters prior to them. You'd wander through a number of cold, uninviting environments filled with the bodies of both human and covenants alike, and soon begin to feel like you were trapped in a horrifying maze of nondescript tunnels. And then, as the stress of anticipation became almost too much to bear, you'd be hit with the one-two punch of the drones bursting out in front of you, followed by the macabre scene in the darkened room below. What happens in Data Hive's current guise is still anxiety-inducing nonetheless, but I reckon just a bit more restraint on Bungie's part could have led to an even more harrowing outcome. I also can't talk about Data Hive without mentioning its circular rooms, and indeed the corridors they punctuate, both of which appear far too frequently during its early stages. There are definite shades of Halo Combat Evolved Mission Assault on the Control Room, which itself had a real problem with similar environmental repetition. In that mission, there was a long section during which you transitioned between these bridges and these circular rooms without doing much else, and Data Hive is much the same. You spend a lot of time in either these hallways or these smaller areas, regularly moving between the two, and it begins to quickly feel very repetitive. The encounters within them are mixed up. For example, at one point you take on a pack of invisible brutes in the darker hallways, which I always enjoy, and I do like the icy areas towards the mission's midpoint accompanied by a switch to a cooler colour palette, but neither environments nor encounters are mixed up enough that proceedings avoid feeling very unengaging after a while. And that is a particularly impressive feat when you consider that ODST's levels shouldn't really have that problem, considering their truncated runtimes compared to traditional or Halo affairs. There's a nice touch with the officer referenced earlier, which I want to highlight briefly too. If you've collected 29 out of 30 audio logs prior to beginning Data Hive, he will actually lead you to the conclusion of the storyline featured in them before trying to kill you. And if you haven't, the superintendent AI will trap him earlier on. You hear that? Buggers! Down on your level! Oh no! They're up here too! Coming out of the damn vent! Get back! No! Crime ah! doesn't pay. <sighs> It's not something I'd take into account when talking about the level's quality, but it's an interesting addition and a nice way to conclude that particular plot thread in-game, made all the more unique due to the officer being the only human encountered in the series who will attack you without provocation. Quite the claim to fame, if I do say so myself. Heading into the level's final third, you meet up with Dare, who gives you the rundown on what exactly her mission is. Some idiots blew the building at the top of the shaft, woke the whole hive. Down there? That's the superintendent. The AI that runs every system in the city. My mission, our mission, is to secure the superintendent's data. Problem is, there's only one way in from here. Right through the hive. And what follows really puts the hive into data hive. Flanked by Dare, there are one or two more of the same old boring corridors to traverse, but soon enough you reach the hive itself. This next section I'd guess you're either going to be a fan of or detest with every fibre of your being. In the interest of objectivity, I'm going to try and look at it from both angles, although I must confess that I think it's a great encounter. It's the Halo equivalent of the famous scene in Aliens where the Marines wander into the hive and are promptly ambushed. In fact, given how many other similarities there are between the two franchises, it wouldn't surprise me if ODST's rendition is directly inspired by James Cameron's action masterpiece. Drones surround you from all directions in the hazy environment, and it can at times be quite overwhelming, in a good way, for me at least. The drone's presence can certainly be oppressive, especially on higher difficulties, but you're given the largest arena thus far to soften the blow, with the encounter becoming much easier once you get into a rhythm of manoeuvring so that most of your enemies are in front of you. On the other hand, I can equally understand how you might find the encounter to be incredibly irritating. For many, the drones are up there with the Flood as one of Halo's most annoying enemies to fight, and if you feel that way, nothing here will change your mind. And when paired with gameplay, some will find at best repetitive and at worst completely uninspiring earlier on, the Hive is shown in a particularly bad light. It's another few minutes that feels like a drag in a level which might already feel like, well, a drag. A further encounter with another group of Covenant, including a brief chieftain with a gravity hammer, acts as a palate cleanser of sorts, before Ricky and Dare make an unusual new friend. 
Don't shoot. We've seen them before on other ops, but we've never gotten this close. A scene which changes ever so slightly if you've collected all the audio logs. Instead of Rookie aiming his gun at the newly discovered engineer, he will whistle for it to come out of hiding instead, with Dare being the one to aim her gun at the creature. You might notice too that Rookie's whistle is the same noise the superintendent makes, a very clever addition many are likely to miss. Also, and someone may correct me on this, but I'm not sure it makes sense that who points the gun changes depending on the number of audio logs collected. Like earlier with the NMPD officer, the alternate scene is a nice way of rewarding those who have spent time gathering collectibles. However, I do wonder whether they should have shown either Rookie raising his gun or neither Dare nor Rookie raising their weapons for consistency's sake. As you begin to exit the area, you meet up with Buck once again for what is by far Data Hive's best encounter before Bungie throws in another scary moment. Dropping down this hole, you'll turn and realise you're surrounded by sleeping drones nestled on the ceiling. It's a real horror moment you might have encountered before, certainly in films. This, I think, could have been moved to earlier in the mission. At this point, you're firmly in the action part of Data Hive, and your blood will be well and truly pumping, which dampens its impact somewhat as you're not really on edge to begin with. Stick this in during the level's early stages when you first meet the drones instead, and I think it would be a lot more memorable. Where it is, it's not far off feeling like a continuation of the encounter you've just fought through, and it definitely loses some of its shock value as a result. To lighten the mood, there is some entertaining dialogue not long after between Dare and Buck. I've seen hundreds of these things today. Why is this one so important? This engineer knows what the Covenant's after. If I could safely capture more of them, I would. What they know could win the war. Oh. You haven't killed any of them, have you? No! Well, maybe one or two. Nice work. How was I supposed to know? But little else of value before Data Hive concludes. I would have liked to have seen the Hive, or the astounding number of drones present, play a larger part in these last few areas if I'm being honest. They could have possibly had a similar mechanic to the penthouse you visit during New Alexandria in Halo Reach, except where in that section you had to run from a seemingly endless swarm, perhaps on this occasion it would be about protecting Virgil from them, or maybe more would spawn the slower you progressed, acting as a very lethal timer of sorts, pushing you towards the finish line. Although, given the level ends quite abruptly, I don't suppose it matters too much either way. Whether you find Data Hive to be a delicious mix of environmental storytelling and atmosphere, or a rancid combination of repetitive areas and irritating encounters, is going to depend on what you look for in a Halo mission. If you're someone like me who places particular value in the intangibles which complement combat, I think it's several scares in an inhospitable locale make it a mission you might find quite entertaining at times. If you're someone who believes gameplay is the most important thing, and that everything else should be built around a solid core experience, then Data Hive's samey rooms and unimaginative, sometimes frustrating firefights will probably bore you to tears. And it also wouldn't surprise me at all if a lot of people watching this video land somewhere in the middle of the spectrum between these two contrasting points of view. As such, I think I'd be hard-pressed to describe Data Hive as Halo's worst level. For some, it certainly won't be great fun, but it does include some redeeming features and a few great moments, which means most will hopefully get at least something out of Halo 3 ODST's most divisive level. Thanks for watching the video, boys, girls and Spartans. If you enjoyed it and didn't think I was droning on and on, do consider subscribing to the channel and letting me know your thoughts, and hopefully I'll see you all again soon.